All right, well, we are just wrapping up, getting ready to take off here from Sand Mountain. It is getting busier and busier. Now that we're coming into the weekend. So we're loading up and we are heading out. We're gonna go back into Fallon and then we're gonna go uh, check out some stores and stuff. And then we're gonna go to the Churchill State Historic Park. I think it's cl close to uh, Silver Springs. I guess they got some abandoned uh, buildings or something like that. So we're gonna go check that out as a cool little history lesson for the kids. And then they also, I heard, have RV camping. I don't think it has hookups or maybe it has water. I'm not sure, but it's 15 bucks. So we're gonna stay there tonight. And then tomorrow, we're gonna get up and we're gonna try and get up to Virginia City to go go on a train ride, to go go, to go on a train ride. So that is the plan for now. I am just hooking up the internet up to the inverter in the truck and we're gonna get on the road. We had to stop so we could get our picture by the sign. I'm sure you can hear, but my mom's next door watching hers. I think the whole neighborhood can hear her. We stopped in at a laundromat here in Silver Springs. My grandma's over here making some lunch. I'll have whatever cheese you got. Oh, okay, Swiss cheese. Okay, where's that? There's Evan. Yeah. All right. What do we got going on, guys? Monopoly? Uh-huh. Scott and go. Alright. Well, this is how we take break times while we're waiting for laundry to be done. Do you drive, do you turn left down by where the old buildings are, or keep going all the way straight down the road? Oh, keep going straight down the road, and then you'll cross a little, it looks like a cattle bridge. Fort Churchill State Historic Park. Yep, 15. If you're just coming from the day, it's only 5. 15 to stay the night. Looks like a campground. I'll just blame my mom. She's the one that said I got you hey, a spot across from us. So we'll blame grandma if we have to no. get kicked out. <laughs> no. There's water spigot over there. There's Sensei Evan over there practicing his karate. He's been uh, watching Cobra Kai. So now he's like Mr. Mr. Karate Guy. Huh, there's Juliana doing something suspicious. As always. Marcy's running off everywhere. All right, well that was a quick walk around the whole park. I think there's, yeah, there's 20 sites here. Maybe 21 with the one we're parked in. There's no number. I don't know, my mom's in number one. Maybe we're not supposed to camp there. I don't know. Guess we'll find out if we get told to move. There's those buildings, guys. We're walking down the trail to the Fort Churchill State Historic, the old army base, I guess. We're gonna go find out. Well, this makes a little loop. We'll walk around this loop. Ruins loop. So look at the building, guys. Look at where it used to go. Look at the bottom. You can see how the wall used to come out over here and around. These are the barracks. This is like if Austin was stationed here back then. 
he would have lived in one of these. Barracks and mess hall. Living quarters for one company of approximately 100 men consisted of three buildings, two barracks and a combined mess hall kitchen. By October 1860, six barracks were up but only partially finished and remained this way for years. For the enlisted men, life at Fort Churchill was isolated and unprecedented. They lived in dirt-floored barracks furnished with crude beds and chairs, ate a meager diet of beef, salt, pork, bread, and coffee, and performed manual labor for only 13 per hour. Recreation was largely limited to fishing on the river or drinking and playing cards at the post store or Burke's Bar Bucklands Station. Wow. That, that's his per month. Oh, 13 per month. Yeah, not an hour. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd like to go in, but it says not to, so we're going to do what it says and we're going to follow the rules and not go in, even though I really want to go in. So does this guy, Mr. Slowpoke, back here. So it's pretty cool to see all these old barracks and buildings and man I couldn't imagine staying in there and having a dirt floor and wow crazy all right so what's over here officers quarters again you can see like a footprint of what there was but not much left. That one over there, you can see some of the rock foundation that goes across. What do you guys think? Is it pretty cool to come and actually see this history stuff versus just sitting in the classroom, reading about it? Yeah. Dad likes it anyways. <laughs> I wonder what was out here. I haven't seen any signs for anything. I have to find out how big this is, but you can see it kind of just goes in a square and it goes over here and then it comes back up over here to where we're at. Oh, look at this, it's like a two story. Officer's quarters. We're gonna have to grab another picture here. You guys come stand here on the corner. I want to get a picture. They're ready to walk around the whole thing. Yeah, we're going to walk around it. But you guys get right there on the corner so I can snap a picture. All right, so we're going to walk around. So I'm wondering if all of them are two story like this. Wow. Man, I so want to go in there and check it out. But we can't. Gotta go follow the rules. Wow, I wish I could zoom in there. So cool. It's cool they've got these trails at least so we can come check all this out. thing over there. Maybe that's like their escape hole. Maybe that's for their dogs. That's the doggy door back then. Do they have dogs back then? Of course there's dogs. Well, that's a little bit looking different building. I don't know if that came out right. That's a little bit of a different looking building as opposed to what we've seen. Let me check it out. Let's see what this sign here says guys. Officers quarters. Officers and their families lived in six one and a half story buildings made of adobe walls 20 inches thick. Wow. Wide porches sheltered three sides of each building and attached to the back was a woodshed and privy. No trampling through the weather for these officers. The first floor contained a parlor, two bedrooms, a dining room, and a kitchen with a cellar. Life at this post was far more pleasant than other. More isolated outposts and officers considered Fort Churchill a luxury assignment. Wow, this is luxury right here, guys. It'd be cool to fly the drone here, but they don't allow that. Because then you could take the drone in the building without technically going in the building. Hey, Murph, Murph, follow the rules, buddy. Stay on the track. Come on. Come on, Murph, get with the program. 
this two room building served as the ad administrative headquarters and coat room for Fort Churchill. Churchill. Though the smaller office would have included everything necessary for the officer in charge to conduct business and communicate beyond the fort. The office served as a stop for the Pony Express and housed a telegraph to help spread news of major events across the country, including President Lincoln's election. election. The start of Civil War and Nevada State. Wow. So the Pony Express would come here then and drop off mail. That's pretty cool. Especially scenes that we were just at the Pony Express station at Sand Springs by Sand Mountain. Nice. Wow, like so this is also headquarters and the courtroom right here. Wow. Crazies. All right, let's go check out the next one. Storehouse. The quartermaster and substance storehouse were deliberately situated near the commander's office and within view of guardhouse to d discourage the thievery. Both storehouses were built with 20 inch thick adobe walls and includes a finished office and a large unfinished storeroom. The US Army stored and distributed food and other equipment from these storehouses to troop at Fort Churchill and across Northern Nevada. Wow, so this is like the store. This is like the grocery store. This is, this is the Walmart of the 1800s for this place. <laughs> Easy hike for anyone to come do this. You could probably even get a, a wheel trail around on here, really. Or at least one of those off-road ones. But, easy hike. Evan wasn't in the best of moods, so... Him and my mom went back, and me and the girls, and Murphy, are continuing the tour. Ooh, here we are. Lawn dressers quarters. Army regulations allowed for laundressers. The women who lived in this four-room structure provided essential back-breaking laundry services for the men at Fort Churchill who valued spit and polish. The Army provided living quarters and a daily ration for each woman. While the soldiers themselves paid for laundry services, laundresses were often the wives of essential men or enlisted men. When rising construction costs threatened to eliminate the laundress's quarter at the fort, the soldiers united to prioritize completion of this building. Yeah, they didn't want those stinky clothes. Someone had to do it for them. All right, well, if I would have known, we would have just came here and done laundry today, huh? Yeah. We, would, we didn't have to go where we went. We could have just came here. Oh, man, I should have looked ahead. We could have came to this laundromat. What was I thinking? Do you guys think that we could have got laundry done here cheaper? Yeah. Okay, maybe not. Well, that was the last one. We just went around the little square here. You can see it goes over there. And then we went there, then over to here. And we are heading back now to the campground. So yeah, fun little walk. Cool to come check out all these old historic buildings and stuff. Oh, what's this? Oh, look guys, this is like a picture of what it would have looked like. Wow, can you see that? Wait, so this was like an army base? Yes. That's look at that. This was. That's what all these were, yes. So there's like the barracks over here. Those buildings over there were all these buildings right here. And then the officers' quarters that were over there, those were those buildings that were lined up over that way. You can get out. Okay, so this was just like a big open field here. This is where they did training and all that kind of stuff. And look, so I bet you there's trails then that go out that way and there may be some more buildings out that way as well. No known photographers of Fort Churchill from its period of operation exist today. And knowledge of the fort's physical aspects is limited to written descriptions and one lithographic drawing. The drawing shown here depicts adobe buildings arranged in a square around the parade ground. Notice the absence of the defensive wall or barrier. Fort Churchill had no exterior wall since it was intended to be a 
regional base of operations and supply depot rather than a defensive post. Well, we were just heading out and we saw the cemetery and then we looked across the street and there's a museum thing over here. So we're gonna check it out and see what's going on. Here shows the ruins here. Hey, guess what? You were here. Hello. I want this photo, but I don't want the Corvette in it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the museum. Fort Churchill right there. This is pictures of them guys trying to rebuild walls. Oh, okay. Cool wagon. Just to show you what their rooms look like. Oh, guard rooms. That must have been a jail. Oh, awesome. This is what it used to look like. This is an L-shaped building, so what would that be? Hospital. Hospital, yep. Yeah. That's cool. And then these are the two-story, what was it, the, the officer's quarters? And then over here, those were the barracks for the soldiers. And these two were the stores. City, Nevada. They're listed as Fort Churchill's unknown dead since weather and time left their headstones unreadable. Only one grave could be identified, Charles McDermott, commanding officer at Fort Churchill from 1862 until his death in 1865. Today, the old cemetery holds the remains of Samuel Buckland, local rancher and pioneer. Besides him are the remains of his wife, Eliza Ann, and five of their eight children. Okay, so those are the graves over there where people are here. O over there in the metal, around the metal cage over there. Oh, those are. those people are buried here. Yes, they removed 40 soldiers from in here. But Samuel. him and his family and children are buried over there. Samuel Buckland, that's the campground we went to. Yep. That's what it's called. It is. 